Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Progressive Fields Discount Drug Mart Club. We're certainly very excited to usher in a new era and invite and introduce Stephen Vogt as Cleveland's 45th manager in franchise history. To lead us off, I'd like to invite Guardians President of Baseball Operations, Chris Antonetti. Chris? Thank you, Curtis. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us uh, for what is a very exciting day uh, for our organization and our franchise. So you might remember at the start of this process, we shared that we were looking to find a true partner uh, to join our organization and build on the foundation that we have in place. We wanted someone who appreciated the unique culture that we have within our organization, but at the same time could come in, challenge us, help us learn, grow together as we seek to win multiple World Series championships. While there were a ton of things we looked for throughout this process, there were three things that really stood out as defining attributes that we were looking for. First and foremost, we were looking for a collaborative partner. We were looking for someone who is a caring connector and finally a self-confident learner. So what do I mean by that? Well, as a collaborative partner, we were seeking a leader with whom we could build a true trusting partnership, someone who could be aligned with our beliefs and our values, but challenge us to learn and grow and get better through their unique pers perspective, skills, and experiences. We also sought someone who is a caring connector, someone who cares so deeply about people that he or she would build very meaningful, lasting relationships. We wanted someone who would build a fun and inclusive environment where everyone would enjoy coming to work each day to tackle the challenges that we had together. And lastly, we were looking for a self-confident leader. We were seeking a leader that combines the self-confidence and strength to lead within a major league clubhouse, while at the same time having enough humility to continuously learn, grow, and help us all get better. We wanted someone who helps create an open and welcoming environment where any idea is welcome, where we will constantly bring the best ideas to the table to help each other get better. And so we believe Stephen Vogt is all of these things and so much more. We know we will help us learn, grow, and get better as we all pursue our World Series championship in Cleveland. So Stephen, welcome to the Guardians. We're thrilled to have you. And I will turn it over to Mike to add a few comments. Uh, thanks, Chris. Bef before I turn it over to Stephen, um, I just wanted to touch briefly on uh, on our hiring process a little bit. This type of hiring process is, uh, for our organization, is an incredibly collaborative um, process. We did reference calls, framing of the job, um, a huge amount of interviews, as I'm sure voter will tell you uh, if you ask him about it. Um, we probably had over 50 Guardians teammates that were included in that from all different areas of the organization, helping us to, to go through this process together. Um, I won't go through, e through each individual, but it was front office, support staff, field staff, players, uh, performance areas, R&D, and, and many other people that were involved in it. So I just more than anything wanted to say thank you to all of them for helping us in this process. Um, and maybe in particular, I do wanna call out um, our assistant GM, Matt Foreman, um, who took a massive leadership role in, in leading and coordinating the manager hiring process for for us. So thank you, Matt, we really appreciate it. Uh, and now I will uh, turn it over to Steven. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Dolan, to Mike, Chris, Matt, and the entire Guardians organization for allowing me the opportunity to earn this chance. I don't take it lightly, and I'm very excited to get started. I'd like to thank a bunch of people, but we don't have time for that. So I'd like to just say thank you to all of the teammates that I've had over the years, all of the staff members in their various areas, and all the numerous coaches that I've had. Um, starting with my dad, Randy, from four to 18 years old, taught me everything I know about the game of baseball. 
it's become my true love on this earth besides my family is the game of baseball and the people who play it. And my dad taught me that from a very young age. Thank you. Going to need these all day, I think. Um, as you get to know me, this is not abnormal. I'd like to thank my brother, Danny, for being a great example of a leader, um, an older brother, a husband, and a father, and thank him for that. And I'd like to thank my family, my three kids, Peyton, Clark, and Bennett, and my beautiful wife, Alyssa. You, you four have put up with way too much dad being gone, way too much traveling, way too many moves. And here comes another one. Um, but thank you, Alyssa, you are a rock. You are my best friend and my biggest support system and will continue to be. Um, I'd just like to say that joining the Guardians organization is such a privilege for my family and me. The gnarly hours that they put me through through this interview process uh, allowed me a look into this organization and the great people that are a part of it. And I couldn't be more honored to be joining that and hopefully moving that forward in that direction. My goal is to have every single person who puts on a Cleveland Guardian uniform from the Dominican League all the way up through the big leagues knows exactly what it means to be a Cleveland Guardian. That's my goal, and I have going to have a wonderful staff and support group around me in order to do that. I couldn't be more thrilled to be here, and I'm excited to get to know all of you better as we, as we move forward throughout the years. All right, we'll move into Q&A uh, session. So if uh, you could do a couple things, please raise your hand. We have a microphone for you. Uh, state your name and your media affiliation, please. We're going to lead off Tom Withers. Stephen, Tom Withers, Associated Press. Welcome to town. I wanted to ask you about living in a van down by the river, but we can do that some other time. <laughs> hey, you've kind of taken the speed pass to, to be a manager. Um, obviously, the Guardians think you're ready. Why do you think you're ready? Yeah, um, besides eating a steady dieted government cheese. Uh, no, uh, it's a fan down by the river reference, by the way. <laughs> um, I feel like I've been planning for this for a long time. I've been working towards this for a long time. And it, it started back in 2009 when I was with the Tampa Bay Rays as a minor leaguer and unfortunately had a shoulder injury early in the year and sat down with my manager, Jim Morrison, uh, Mitch Lukovics, and Jimmy Hoff, the kind of the leadership group at that time. And asked them for the opportunity to be in the dugout with the team on the on the home games and really dove into learning how to become a coach. You know, I was 24 in high A, figured, you know, another another guy that got hurt in high A and probably get ready to coach and really dove into that side of the game and started to learn, you know, some intricacies on coaching. And it really started to get me excited about that opportunity and gave me a different lens and perspective as my playing career moved on. And it really started then and there and obviously learned so much along the way, played for a, a ton of unbelievable managers, coaches, and just asked questions and paid attention to games in a different way than I think a lot of players did. And a lot of people provided me insights along the way that uh, really aided that. And I think I've really been preparing for this since 2009. Zach Meisel, The Athletic. Steve, just... You kind of touched on it, but the managers you played for during your career, anything you can point to specifically from any of them that, you know, you you wrote down in 2018 with the Brewers or something like that, that you wanted to remember one day when you were in this chair? Yeah, um, I mean, I've got a couple notebooks full, um, but, you know, one of the things that really stuck out to me was Bob Melvin uh, with the A's and my time with him and the way he communicated with players. And the way his uh, he kept his emotions in check at all times. He knew when to talk to you. He knew when to leave you alone. And when I would ask him about it, he said, it's all about knowing your people. It's all about knowing their personalities, their learning styles, their listening skills, their abilities, and allowing them to be themselves. And when I heard Bob tell me that and able to pay attention to my teammates, pay attention to the coaches and the way everyone was interacting, um, that one message from Bob about knowing your people really stuck with me. Who's next? Don't be shy.
Hey, Stephen, congratulations. This is John Sable with Fox 8 here in Cleveland. Uh, what made this organization so attracted to you early in the process, and how much did you know about how they were operated from afar as a player and then last year as a coach in Seattle? Well, last year in Seattle, you know, I, I would hear a lot of comparisons between the two organizations, and there are a, little, a lot of similarities. Um, but I didn't know a whole lot about the Guardians organization, to be honest. But again, the process of the interview and the 40 hours of interviews and Zooms and <laughs> numerous uh, phone calls and things like that. But honestly, the first day of the process of the interview gave me a great insight into the inner workings of the organization, but more importantly, the people that are here. And top to bottom, the first thing every single person that I spoke to in the interview process mentioned was their family. And that told Alyssa and I everything we needed to hear, that this is a family first, family oriented group that just wants to go out and win a bunch of baseball games. And learning that through the interview process, there, there was no doubt in my mind. I think I mentioned to my wife after I got off that first day of interviews and I said, I want to be there. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart and it's still true. And I, again, couldn't be more proud to be here. Uh, Terry Pluto, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Uh, Steve, did you uh, talk to Terry Francona at all about Cleveland or anything? I did, yeah. I was able to talk to T uh, Tito a couple times throughout the process and have spoken with him already uh, since getting the job. And, you know, I knew Tito a little bit from playing against him from across the way. And, you know, you hear all the stories, but Tito has made it very clear to me that he, he wants to allow me to do, do this, but also he wants to be a resource for me anytime that I feel like he's there. And, He's already been, it's just so much fun to talk to him and so insightful and um, he's, he's such a special person. So I'm very thankful for Tito. Did he give you um, any couple of reasons why, what type of job this is and you know that kind of thing, which is what it would be like? Would anything, do you say, I guess what I'm saying, a couple of things that stuck with you that maybe he said about Cleveland. Again, he couldn't say enough great things about the people. And at the end of the day, for me, and for all of us, I think we're aligned on this, is that this is a people business. Yes, it's about winning baseball games. And yes, it's about going out and competing. But it's all about the people that are doing it. And Tito was right in line with that. And everything he said just confirmed everything that I had been seeing, believing, hearing. And it really made me feel at ease that this is the place where I want to come. All right. One last question. I'll let you go. But you, uh, you know, this is a small market budget, small market team, that kind of thing. Uh, your feelings about that managing in that situation? Yeah, I mean, and I think Chris can maybe speak a little more on this, but I've had the experience of playing in Tampa Bay, Oakland, Milwaukee, you know, some places that, you know, not the same but similar, and I've experienced playing on those teams. Uh, we've I've won with those teams, and I know what it takes to work with a group that we have, and I'm really excited about the group that we have, and I have, do have a lot of experience in, in this type of environment. Jason Lloyd of The Athletic. Steve, you, all you guys have joked a little bit about the interview process. So what was it like? How many interviews was it? Total time spent on it? Uh, well, I'm not sure we have enough time to cover that. But, um, you know, honestly, it was, uh, it, was, it was a long process. And I don't mean long in a negative way. It was a thorough process. And I would say we probably ended up 22, 23 hours in total. Um, whether in person or via Zoom or phone call, and that I'd probably take the over on that number. Um, but at the end of it, I felt like through the first two sessions, they knew who I was and I knew who, who I was going to get to join if I did get the job. And I'm thankful for the thorough process. I'm thankful that the due diligence happened uh, because it confirms that they feel like they found the right person and it confirmed for me that I know I found the right place. And for Chris or Mike, it's been quite a while since you guys have had to do this. And the game has changed so drastically in that time on the field. Did it change at all what you were seeking in a manager this time around just because the game seems to be played differently than it was 10, 11 years ago? Well, I think first and foremost, first and foremost, um, what we were seeking to do with the interview process was the same, and that is really to try to find the best leader for our organization, but also to have that person get to know us as well as possible. So we took that same approach with Tito as we did with Steven. Now, the process itself evolved a little bit because 
as you said, it's a lot more complicated. I think, as Mike mentioned, we had over 50 people from our organization that were involved in getting to know Stephen and also tried to give him some insight into how we operated. So hopefully by the end of that process, as Stephen said, he got a chance to know us really well and we, feel, we felt we got a chance to know him really well as well. And Jeff. Jeff Shidal, News Herald. Um, Stephen, how, how do you think your career as a catcher is, has prepared you to be a manager? I, I believe that's the, the number one thing that's going to have me prepared for this job. Uh, I know how to deal with position players because I was one, and I know how to deal with pitchers because I worked with them throughout my whole uh, career. And they are two very different breeds, um, to say it nicely. But uh, I, I also think, you know, the majority of my career was game planning and making in-game decisions. You know, there's 150 to 175 in-game decisions that you make as a catcher every night, and any one of them could be the impact that leads to a win or a loss. So having that ability and gone through that process is really going to help. And also being a catcher, you get the insights to working with the analysts, working with the front office, working with the coaches, working with the trainers. You get an, a look into every avenue and every arena in our game. And I think going through that as a catcher and being that field general, so to speak, it really has prepared me uh, to be ready to do this job. Hi, Cleveland, or I should say hi, Stephen. <laughs> Welcome to Cleveland. Uh, Brendan Kulig <laughs> with Cleveland Baseball Insider and uh, SI Media Group. Hey, um, you know, you've been asked a lot of baseball questions. I think our fans are, are hoping to get to know you. And one of the things the team put in the press release is that there's a special place in your heart for working with young kids that have autism and special needs children. Why is that an important cause to you? I think I think it's an it's an area where you know not a lot of people feel comfortable and you know my wife Alyssa was a special ed teacher and we've been heavily involved with the School of Imagination in the Bay Area um, just an unbelievable school in Dublin California that's reaching over 250 families in the Bay Area in Northern California and it's it's an area like I said that's not always comfortable and it's so near and dear to our hearts uh, because it's a lot of fun you know going and spending an afternoon with a group of students playing, you know, playing baseball, riding bikes, going down slides, doing crafts, doing arts. It's it's something that we're very passionate about. We love giving our time back and just to see the smile. It doesn't really matter who it is, but when somebody shows up with a baseball jersey on, it just brings a smile to to those kids face and shows them that we're willing to take part time out of our day to come spend with you because we want to be here. This is important to us. And it's always been a very uh, big cause of ours that we love to support and something that we will continue to do, hopefully here in the Cleveland area and, and around. Then one baseball question for you. I, I'm sure it came up somewhere along the way that, you know, you're the second youngest manager now in baseball. And this is a, a roster with some really young guys. Do you feel that it could be a strong suit for you that you have the relatability of having very recently wrapped up a playing career where you can maybe explain things or identify in a way that that young players can really relate to yeah absolutely obviously we have a very exciting young team and i uh, can't wait to get to know them and work with them as quickly as possible and i do think that's a strong suit the fact i just got done playing i've played against or with or uh, alongside a lot of the guys that are going to be in uniform and knowing the way younger players tick what they're thinking what they're feeling when they it's very different than when i got to the big leagues not too long ago, I guess it is, is that kind of long ago. I, and I, and I, finally, I am the young guy for one time in my career. I've always been the old guy, so it's kind of nice. But being able to relate to them and knowing how to speak to them, being able to pick up on what they're feeling from their body language, what they're thinking as they're getting their feet wet, there's nothing harder than making it to the big leagues and believing you belong. And the, quickly, the quicker I can help with that and the staff can help with that, that's going to be our number one goal is to get our young guys up and running and feeling comfortable. A few more. Stephen, hi. Jensen Lewis of Valley Sports Great Lakes. Welcome to Cleveland. Two questions for you. A full circle moment now is going to come for you. Your last at bat was a homer uh, and your kids announced you. Your first managerial experience is going to be in Oakland. Has it even sunk in yet that you're just months away from that? And then secondly, um, as you look at this club, and obviously with the leadership group here, I'm sure there's been a lot of collaboration. What are next steps for you here in the next couple of weeks as you put your staff together, take a look at this roster, and make your assessments as we go into Goodyear? Um, good to see you. Um, yeah, I, uh, 
I, I the first thing we did as soon as we found out that you know we were going to get this opportunity. Listen, I looked at the schedule and we we're like, holy smokes, we start in Oakland, and um, that's going to be such an emotional moment. Uh, I grew up grew up close to there. Going to have a ton of friends and family, um, and to hear your name announced on a field for the first time as a manager in Oakland, um, with an opportunity to get your first win in Oakland, first few wins. How about that? First few wins. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, it's going to be such a full circle special moment and another sign that this is where I'm supposed to be and uh, firm believer in that. Um, and to answer your other question, uh, you know, I think they announced it at 830 and at 831 I had text messages from these guys with a to do list. So <laughs> we've been <laughs> we've been we've been uh, we've been to work a lot already. And I think that is the next steps is, you know, finalizing the staff and really just getting up to speed on the things that, you know, I need to know about the organization and, um, you know, the way we do things, our processes and things like that, and really just getting to know people and having people get to know me on a deeper level and uh, really get to work. We've been we've been running for a few days now. And uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to slow down anytime soon. Hi, Steve and Janine Carroll, Ronald McDonald House Charities of Northeast Ohio. And uh, we want to welcome you to our community. And I just have to say, uh, amongst all of us, Cleveland is a family and community-based city and greater area. And we are just delighted that you take that so seriously. The organization values family, and families value this organization. So thank you for being here, and we hope to welcome you to our home away from home in Cleveland. Thank you very much. I look forward to connecting and um, speaking more about how we can get involved for sure. Terry? Hey, Stephen. Uh, Terry Pluto again. Uh, how did they tell you you got the job? And then what did you do, say, immediately after? So, like I said, the process had gone a little like cattywampus back and forth. And it was really tough, you know, to really wrap my mind around when they were going to make their decision. But uh, Chris called me on Thursday and said, hey, we're going to make our decision tomorrow. And so going into Friday, I looked at Alyssa and I said, what am I going to do Friday? He didn't say when he's going to call. He didn't tell me what to do. I, I can't just sit around. So she said, well. We got some work to do out at the horse barn, so we could go do that. So we uh, loaded up the tractor into the trailer. We were headed out to the horse barn, and they said, hey, we're going we're gonna to call you at 930. So I pulled over into a feed lot and jumped on a Zoom real quick, and they, they said, congratulations. We wanna, we're going to offer you the next you know, Cleveland Guardians managing job. And I accepted and proceeded to go move a big pile of horse manure all around <laughs> the horse pasture, and it was – a great way to take my mind off of a day that was sure to be very stressful and uh, with anticipation of, of what the decision was going to be. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget that day and that moment. And uh, what, a, what a beautiful, beautiful thing to go do right after you find out you're going to be the manager. Hi, Stephen. Leah Doherty with Channel 19. Welcome to Cleveland. I'm curious when you're able to speak to the clubhouse for the first time, what do you want those guys to know about you? Yeah, uh, great question. I think for me, it's that I want them to know that I'm I'm a hard worker. I'm going to be with them. I've got a lot of energy and I'm going to be with them every step of the way that I want them to know that I've got their back no matter what, that I'm going to give them whatever support I can have and the staff will as well. And just understanding that we're in this together. This isn't about one of us individually. This isn't about any one person. This is about our group, our team, and our entire organization. We represent Cleveland. We represent everybody. And really what that means and what that embodies is what my message is going to be. And are there any guys on the team that have reached out or you've been able to speak with? Yeah, I've connected with seven or eight players already, uh, introducing myself. And again, I've played against uh, a lot of these guys so and being a catcher and being myself i talk to everybody when they come up to play you know and if they like to keep talking sure i'll distract you a little bit but you know um so i kind of feel like i knew some of them going into it there was some familiarity there i uh, was able to have lunch with uh, shane bieber the other day in, in arizona and really connected with him but really trying to gather their thoughts on what they're looking for uh moving forward you know i, I want i want to hear from them because it's their clubhouse and myself and the staff we want to support whatever it is they're looking for uh, for the clubhouse.
Steven in the back. Hi, Steve Majeri, Spectrum News. Uh, welcome to town. Um, you alluded to this earlier, but um, you know, just a couple years removed from your playing career, what do you think is going to be the biggest adjustment you make? You know, making the jump from you know first player to bullpen coach and now skipper. The the biggest adjustment is going to be just the day to day. Um, you know, going from a player, it's all about you. And then you're going to a coach, it's all about the, the other players and the staff and things like that. And now as a skipper, it's the media, the front office, just the just the, the workload itself, I think, is going to be a big adjustment for me. Um, I'm going to rely a lot on the people around me. And that that goes for the day to day. That goes for the in game. That goes for, for everything. I've never been the person that says I have this figured out. I have a, a lot of good ideas, a lot of good ideas. But I also love hearing new ideas. I love talking to everybody I can to get what their thoughts are and, and their things and really collaborate and work together on things. So for me, that's going to be the biggest adjustment is just learning how to do the job on a day to day basis. One more. All good. Well, thank you for being here today. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll break off into some one on ones now. And for anybody who wants to get a, uh, some images of what's happening in the ballpark, uh, we'll do a special uh, breakout. We have to be very careful of where we go uh, since this is a construction site right now. So thank you very much.